must stay strong for nothing lingers on I love a song that has an idea and it's something that after you listen to it you can walk away and uh, think about it so an idea wrapped up in in a very sweet sounding form you know the musical backing to it and that's what um, what I enjoy and that's what I try and do with the songs that I write. Yeah, looks nice. Ooh. Yeah, well, well, I reckon we've already half got it. For that, what is it? Boy, you must be strong. Yeah, that's tight, actually, that's great. Hmm. Yeah? Good, good. Yeah, well, that's the place that, that I thought, well, the chorus is the only part that I can sort of see that, that would be harmony. What about it's... It's overall, you know, how it should be presented. That is, for instance, um, if it's going to be on guitar, it'd want to be Peter probably playing it, I think, because I don't want on the T-shape. Yeah. Oh, are you? Uh, well, it's a nice guitar piece. Just, see, if I played over it, just lightly, over mine. Yeah, just lightly. Mm. I'll just follow you for a bit. Well, I don't know what this chord's called. From the set. It's a yeah. funny looking A, but it isn't an A at all, it's one of those chords. Ah, oh, one of those, yeah. 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 Right. Uh, so it goes from A, it goes from A funny, A dash funny, to D. Dash hilarious. D dash hilarious. <laughs> to B minor dash absurd, B minor dash absurd, minor seven. <laughs> you know, so it goes, that run is just this. Right, so it's A funny, ridiculous. D, that B minor run to E, yeah. right? Yeah. We'll just do a verse of that, see how it sounds. Without singing, two, three, four. That B, that is good apart, especially that little chord you put in down there for the D. But the B minor, we'll just, can we just do that part? Yeah. Two, three, four. Yeah, yeah, that's good. In a hollow grey, a little bunyip lay, dreaming of a mantelpiece. A photograph of Mr. Wackleway. Life can be fun on a bun, yep, run. People confuse their tracks with possums and bunny tracks. You can find them if you know their snacks, fern chutney, and honey smacks twice a day. The first actual job that I had was with Peter Hazenkamp. The two of us got a spot in a little restaurant in Hobart and we'd play for, um, you know, for a meal and a couple of dollars, which was very enjoyable. And that, and that sort of cemented our um, friendship and cemented us as a duo, you know, as a sort of a nucleus for, for other musicians when we got better and when we felt that we had something that we could entertain people with. We both sang and both played guitar at that stage, but uh, John had been singing for a few years anyway and acquired a much stronger voice than mine. And, uh, and I was I've been doing a lot of playing, so we, so we com accommodated each other there in that I played more guitar and I played a 12-string. I still play a 12-string, which adds a bit more volume to the backing so that um, so John can afford to sing and I can afford to, to just, just play and concentrate on playing and not sing. And um, together we'd, we'd have a, quite a, you know, a reasonably polished sort of product. when I found that I could, I could write songs, I could write material, feelings or experiences that I could put together with the music, which, which also had the same value as far as showing emotion, 
and put the two together and I could get together, I could put together a song in the end which would serve both purposes. I would be pleased with the ability to play, the pleasure of the music. i would be pleased in the, in the fact that I've been able to get a, a message across lyrically. And uh, when the two got together like that, well, there's just no stopping me. I just found something that I, that I really enjoyed. Set up my drink with faces familiar. There's dishes in the sink. This bar's gonna kill you. Got a portfolio for drinking to sin it. Send the taxi around the back, but I'm not getting in it. Listen to my story, but don't cry in the beer. It's warm by the old litter, but it's cold. writing sort of love songs or sort of more close to the heart, more personal experience stories, whether it be an interesting experience at a concert or in a bar or, or with my friends, or whether it's a close personal relationship I've had with somebody that, um, that draws me to, to want to, to talk about it or paint a picture with it. Well, this year I'm doing Sociology 3A and English Literature 3A, hopefully to pass and hopefully to uh, do a dip ed and uh, eventually to teach. And fellas, how's it going? I've worked with the department before, the education department, working with migrant kids. I found it really good. I got on well with them, they liked me, and uh, while I was playing guitar for them and helping teachers out. And I think I just got a bit of a, an inkling for it. Chapman. It turned out that we ended up playing together quite a bit and writing songs. And uh, a friend of mine who runs the uni bar I'd known also for a few years was after a, a daytime act for a starter. I quietly suggested that I do it with a friend of mine. He said, yes, OK, well, you can come in a couple of weeks. So we frantically raced off and got as many songs together as we could and improved on the, the latest ones that we'd done and the earlier ones as well. And uh, from then on, we've had the job. We're not playing 
much, if any, original material in that environment. And because we're, we're both playing in Fern Chutney with original material and some cover material, we wanted to um, experiment with material that neither of us had, had done before, and in some cases a combination of, of both our different styles that gave us the opportunity to express ourselves a bit more individually than we had the ability to do within the band. We can more or less let flights of fancy go and do what we want to do. And instrumentally, it uh, is more or less the same. We can we play reasonably well together. As I said, we've done it for quite some time. They can anticipate each other quite a bit. And all that goes into making up something which is uh, quite a bit looser than the, the band situation, which has to be tight to survive. The idea for the song is always, always, without, without any shadow of a doubt, um, sparked off by the music first. I could be sitting around fiddling with something, and if I like it, I'll fiddle with it a bit more and you know, get a little bit more out of it. And when I'm reasonably proficient with what I'm doing, I tend to start thinking about, about the mood that it, it gives me, and words seem to come from there. If I've only got half a song written and the words have appeared, as it were, magically, but if the feeling's gone and I've got the other half of the song to complete, that's when I have to start work, as such. Lyricism for me is a lot harder than music when I have to actually think about it. I find when I get away to um, indulge in my other pastime, which is fly fishing, it gives me a lot of time to relax and to reflect and think about things, it tends to creep into the music every now and then, I think. Now the frozen waste of age Hold you in your cage You were chasing life through eyes of blue Now life seems grey and it must come to you But your thoughts, they start to run To your empty-headed son Who hasn't written a letter in the past three and you're sitting day by day by the window so you may see the autumn leaves that fall like it is like it is they'll fade The audience laugh at you when you're wiggling your tail around out at the front. Keep wiggling it until they stop. <laughs> we've got to do anything we can to pad it out for an hour. I mean, we've said we, it's, said it's going to be an hour, haven't we? Yeah. Right, quiet. Go. I believe you have a voice, Carl. Carl, Whatever. Sing it, big boy. Right, now really get into it. Wanna get to know you, wanna dance and get to know you, you know you want to trust me. Face to me is 
life for your mom But since you're frightened, come on, start dancing with me Now don't be shy, Jesus, just get down and dance with me You're with me Well, it's really just a little I've been teaching for five years and I find it really very satisfying. It's not a terribly easy job, but it's something that you certainly don't get bored with, you know, no matter how well or badly the lessons are going. You never sit down at the end of the day and, and think, oh, gee, you know, what a, what a drag it is. And it's marvellous. I like working with, with kids. I like their sense of humour and their imagination. The musical Drac Belladonna I wrote about two and a half years ago and it was the first time that I could write a song and have somebody else sing it and that was very satisfying for me and I think that's the reason why I shied away from picking an established musical to do with the kids because I, I wanted to hear my own work, you know, it sounds very very vain and self-indulgent, which, in, which indeed it is, but that was the spark behind it. Right. Beautiful. I would like to be a full-time songwriter. Um, I'd like to spend, yeah, all, all of my time on it. And because I work, um, and because I've got other things that I have to do, other commitments, then I don't, you know, I mean, I don't sort of walk around going, you know, bum, 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 bum. you know, I, I just, whenever I can get a time slot that I can put all of my concentration into, then, then I write. But I can't, I mean, you simply can't just say, oh, well, you know, it's 11.30 and the house is pretty quiet, I might go down and try and write a song. I mean, you can do that, but ideally, the best thing is to know that you have a whole day or a whole week that you don't have to do anything else but try and write. And then you might come up with something, you know, you might not. But that's, that's the sort of time that you need. children away a country full of martyrs ten in every town they say and we wonder and we wonder and we wonder why while all of the children cry I don't get into the sort of love song writing very much and it's not because, um, you know, because I don't like love songs. I mean, I have written love songs that I've been happy with, but it's, the, it's a kind of an area that you can be a little bit sort of hard on sleeve, you know, trite-ish about. And so, you know, I don't like to be sort of too sugary sweet. By the same token, I also don't like jumping on every issue bandwagon, you know, writing a song about uh, the whales and, and uranium and aboriginals and, and, and have a new flag. I mean, I think those issues are really important and, it, and I like to write about While certain issues, but I just write about what interests me and try to make the way I say it as interesting and as, and as musical within the lyrics as well as within the music as possible. And we wonder, and we I suppose there's a there's a basic kind of a song form that that we have in popular music, which is you know a couple of verses, 
a nice, interesting middle, and then back to the couple of verses. And, and it only sort of struck me quite recently that that was indeed the form and a very acceptable and easy, once you get the hang of it, an easy form to follow. So I suppose there was that, there was learning, learning the form. And, and then working on the lyrics so that they didn't seem hackneyed. God bless you, Ireland. And so I, I see it as a craft that you just have to keep on going at it and keep on working at it. And it gets provided that your inspiration doesn't dry up. Your writing must get better and better, at least in, ter in terms of form. Alone in a blaze. Slaughter them for what they've done today. God bless you, Ireland. One big frustration is not being in a position to have every song that you do arranged there on the spot after it's been written, when, the, uh, when your own enthusiasm is uh, so high and having to leave us a song in cold storage for months even before anybody looks at it. And then, and by that time, you know, you might look back on the song and think, oh, you know, it's not that good. It'd be a bad note to finish on, John. What's that? If it needs a finishing note. All of the children cry. All of the children cry. All of the children cry. It's good because it, it, it's not something that hasn't been sung about before. That's good, nice song, tune. Mm. Yeah, I can see the whole band in that one too. <clears throat> can you? Yep. You can see well, um, some keyboard in that. <coughs> when we grow, it? when we grow, some guns we'll raise. Sort of boom, boom. Underneath, oh, yeah. with the bass going boom, 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 something like that. But that'll really swell. I can see that swelling there. Yeah, I thought of an accordion. An accordion? <coughs> I used to be able to play one of those ones. Oh, well, you do that with a synthesizer. Yeah. Doing what part, though? Eh? Doing what part? Or just just lying underneath it in different areas. Mm. Maybe even in the chorus, just just tinkering away in the background because they've always got those little you can mm. little. Squeeze boxes, mm. and they're playing them all. Mom's One of those, but, but on the synthesizer. Yeah, it had that laying underneath it as an effect. Well, I thought of just having it as a, as a straight, acoustic piece. Oh, yeah. Actually, of just. What do you? Reckon? Well, no, <laughs> it does you know, a lot of strength in it, and I think. You well, I know it has. You know, but it's also. Use it, make use of it. It's also. Um, it's also an acoustic song. You know what I mean? Now, and if. What I'm worried about is that if we start introducing other instruments apart from guitars, then that's going to um, ruin, you know, ruin its sort of folky flavour. I think it's verging on a not so much acoustic song anyway. I think it's verging on a half and half, where acoustics will have to come through, sure, but I think keyboard would really, Especially really work course, on that. You've got the opportunity to build. To, yeah, to, to, mm. to do the whatever it goes in the verses in that. In the chorus, um, it's such a, a build-up anyway. You could really clang into it and then drop it out again at the end of it. That'd be quite dramatic. Mm, because you're coming yeah, in softly. That's, that's you're coming in softly place. again on, on yeah. each verse. Yeah. Sort of like in the Maisie yeah. tradition of building that up and then coming in right, softly. Right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I think that'd work. Cause especially if it's yeah. especially if the well, especially if the bass. I mean, you wouldn't want the bass, you know, sort of racing all over the place. You'd want if it was so have just to just time. Yeah, just. A, Boom, 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 single note kind of yeah. thing. Yeah, well, it's. But you meant like cymbals and things like that. Crashing sounds and, you know, like, it really bring it in there, it'll be, you know, it'll be quite, a, quite an exciting change. And then, of course, I mean, that, that's, that's the emotion, and then you dive, dive off it again into, in, into the verse. When we grow some guns, we'll raise and set the whole world in a blaze. The second program about Foo and Chutney shows how their songs are arranged, rehearsed and performed.
When we grow some guns we'll raise And set the whole world in a blaze Slaughter them for what they've done today God bless you, Ireland